In this Throne and Liberty video, I bring you a complete guide on defeating the Roaring Temple Co-op Dungeon Boss. How's it going guys? My name is DPJ and I'm giving away 1000 plus a Lucent every few days. Now to win it's as simple as this, drop a like on this video, leave a comment down below, make sure you are subbed. I'll pick winners from the comments section and announce them on tomorrow's Throne and Liberty video, so good luck everybody. Okay, so running co-op dungeons in Throne and Liberty is one of the better ways to get to and that endgame loot. Uh, along your way to a level 50, you will come to the co-op dungeon of the Roaring Temple. Now, the actual run to the boss is relatively straightforward. I don't think anyone needs directions or a guide on that. But the boss of this place may be a different story for you. So the boss can be a pain in the ass. Even at a much, much higher level than the dungeon recommends, it can still kick your butt. So, the boss of this place is called the King Chimerus, does that say? Yes, I probably butchered that name, I normally do. Now, if you are struggling here, it's probably because of a few reasons. But the normal things I see a lack of are an actual decent healer, or not knowing the mechanics or understanding the mechanics of this boss fight. Now there are a few different ones you need to know about in order to get this boss run down and if you want to farm this for a certain item it's important you know these things and know what's happening here. So the main thing with this boss you want to watch out for are firstly his annoying ass swipe which stuns you on the spot for a few seconds. Now it's quite easy to see coming, it's actually quite easy to avoid at the same time. Uh, but if you want to get close to that front end they will no doubt try and hit you with it. Or sometimes he just targets you and jumps after you. This is normally something he does with me. If this happens to you though, just pull him away from your other teammates so they can lay damage on the boss from behind. So that's the easy boss mechanic out of the way. The other mechanic he does is he sets the floor ablaze which can easily result in death if the correct things are not done. Now you know when he's doing this attack because he jumps into the middle of the arena. So here guys, to know when this attack is imminent, probably it's best to pull him away from the middle of the arena when you're laying down that damage within the damage phases. So once he does jump into the middle of the room, here's what you need to do and know. Now I was told that you need to use the chains in order to throw yourself up into the air to avoid the floor being on fire. Now although this is the correct thing to do, what's actually happening here is, when you hook onto the chains within this arena, What's happening here is it's releasing fluid onto the boss which is knocking him out of his phase. Now I do feel a few of these chains need to be hooked onto to knock him out of his phase, but exactly how many I ain't too sure. But I've died mid-air after hooking onto one of these chains while gliding around. So multiple of these chains need to be grappled onto and done so as soon as he enters this devastating damage on the player phase. Now if you take too long or if it isn't done right it can lead to instant death no matter what level you are. Now some players including myself have semi tanked this phase, it might be because other players have hooked onto the chains when necessary and stopped the full damage phase from taking place. But yes whenever he jumps into the centre of the room guys, here you want to hook onto those chains ASAP around the edges of the arena to knock him out of it by pouring that liquid on him. Not sure what this liquid is, probably water, probably something else, I ain't sure, but it knocks him out of this phase where you then see him kind of stunned in the, center, in the middle of the room. Once this is done guys, lay down more damage and do what you gotta do here. So the other mechanic this boss does, which is stupid powerful, is he targets a player. He stuns them in place uh, with like this green aura around them and then he shoots out three or four fireballs at them. These do devastating damage. If all three hit a player they are absolutely done. So here guys this is what you need to do. Look out for when a boss shoots at a green orb out of its tail. Now he does this a few times where he just leaves pools of like poison on the floor. But one of these, if it hits a player, I'm not sure exactly how this works. But one, like an orb comes out, it hits a player. It will put this green aura on them and stun them in place. Uh, and then he will then target them and shoot fireballs at that said player that is stuck in place. Now we ain't sure if this attack can be dodged, I mean like if he shoots this green orb at you and you dodge out of the way of it, I'm not sure if you can, but if also we can try this and let us know down below. 
But what I do know is when it does hit somebody, you need to basically share that damage that is going to do to that said player stuck in place by running in front of these firewalls the boss fires at a target who's got that green aura on them stuck in place locked in place so you need to share the damage here that the boss is shooting at that one said player locked in place so when you see a teammate stuck on a spot surrounded by that green aura other players need to run and stand between the boss and that stuck player to share that damage to take the shots of those fireballs now what i will say is these fireball shots the boss shoots have, have crazy aoe damage with them so don't stand directly in front of the player stunned instead get as close to the boss as possible to protect that player who's stuck in place and it may take a few teammates taking a shot for that stuck player not to die depending on his level obviously but once the boss has stuck with those fireballs the stuck player is freed and he can lay down more damage to that boss and well it's just basically a cycle between these boss damage phases once you know what you're doing it ain't too bad i mean like i said once you get the mechanics down here this is one of the easier bosses in these co-op dungeons this is only a level 30 some players are way past this yet but other players ain't got to this point in the game yet so that's why i've made this video but again guys this boss consists of three main attacks that he does the first one is when he swipes at you leaving you kind of semi-stunned on the spot uh leaving you open to take damage from him uh, if this happens to you or a teammate your other players want to come and try and drag his attention from them he also does like i said that where he sets the floor ablaze this one guys you want to use the hooks above you the chains above you uh, multiple teammates need to be jumping up on these uh, these pull and take him out of this phase by pouring liquid on him and then guys he does a more powerful one where he shoots a green like liquid dewy poison all about of his tail this strikes a player it stuns them on the spot and he'll then shoot fireballs at them where other players on the team need to run in front of the player who's stuck in the spot and take a fireball obviously sharing this amongst players on the team not allowing that player to be stuck to be hit with more than one of these fireballs because if he does it's probably going to result in death once you get these three mechanics down like i said this boss is more or less a walk in the park but there we have it guys for the level 30 co-op dungeon and well i hope it helped you out if you did leave a like it really helps me out if you like what you see and want to see more be sure to subscribe and hopefully guys i will see you on that next one